German. What does it look like? What does it sound like? How does it work? This is a page of German text. Had I not just told you that, and if you've never studied anything like this before, do you think that you might be able to identify this as such? I think that it is possible to learn how to recognize the distinctive features and characteristics of various languages, and that's the purpose of this little series of videos, to teach you that in a fashion that will hopefully be interesting enough that it might encourage you to want to go on and study the languages. So this is a German text, and even if your initial reaction to it is that it's strange and exotic and difficult and different and you can't understand anything, I don't think you'll be able to maintain that position if you compare this text with this other text, which is truly exotic. This is Swahili, an African language that has nothing in common with English and therefore has a totally different look and feel and sound and structure, as you can see by looking at this page here. Whereas, back to this page, English and German have a great deal in common. English and German are literally sisters. They have the same mother and were the same origin uh, 2,000 years ago. Uh, and all through that time since then, as uh, almost neighboring uh, languages in Western European culture and civilization, they've shared the same intellectual heritage particularly uh, in terms of their vocabulary, the words that they borrowed uh, from Latin and from French. And so there's a lot in common with this page and with an English page that uh, you might lead you uh, through uh, guesswork based on uh, intuition uh, and some experience to know that this is a Western European language. So if you can determine that, then you need to know that any Western European language is either Germanic or Romance, Latinate. So let's compare this text now with a Romance language. Here's a text of Spanish. Well, what's your initial feeling, your gut reaction to the difference between these two texts? Probably you'll feel, you'll concur, that the Germanic the German text somehow just has a, a sharper, a harder feel, whereas the Spanish text has a somehow softer, rounder feel. There's some other reasons for that that we'll uh, look at later on. But uh, for right now, just know that, uh, that you might want to, if you like statistics, uh, count the consonants and count the vowels in any given line. And you'll probably find that in most of the German lines, most Germanic lines, you're going to have a preponderance of consonants over vowels, whereas in uh, most Romance lines, uh, you're going to have about the same number of consonants and vowels, maybe even more vowels occasionally. The Latin languages tend to be vowel rich, whereas the Germanic languages are uh, rich in particularly consonant clusters. So, determining that this is a Germanic language, can we then tell that it's German? Well, it used to be easier until the uh, first half of the 20th century, any self respecting German text looked like this was printed in the uh, Fraktur print, which actually English used to use several hundred years ago, and which the Scandinavian languages and other Germanic languages used into the 19th century. But if you see a 20th century text uh, pub pr published in this type of print, you know you're looking at a, a German book. Um, most German books, though, that you'll find today look like this. So what distinctive features do you see here? Probably the most, uh, the first thing that will grab your eye are a lot of vowels that have two little dots over them. That's known as the umlaut, and uh, that is a characteristic German feature, but not uniquely so. Other languages also uh, have that sort of diacritical mark. What is uniquely German is this character here, that you can see at the end of this word, and over here at the end of this word, and which you might think looks like a capital B, but Here's a capital B, here's a capital B, and here's this character again, which is uh, called an S set. It's uh, two S's written together, a sharp S sound, and you always find it either at the end of words or sometimes at the end of a syllable with, with in a word. <clears throat> and since I just mentioned uh, capital letters, look again at all the capital letters all over this page. That's another tip-off that you're looking at a German text. In German today, uh, not only the initial letter of a sentence and uh, proper nouns are capitalized, but all nouns are capitalized. Again, that's a feature that English used to have several hundred years ago and that the other Germanic languages have gotten rid of and German may get rid of uh, soon. Uh, I think that was discussed in their last spelling reforms, but it's it's still there. So. 
if you can know that this is what a German page looks like, what, what does it sound like? It sounds something like this, and, and it works something like this. Vorwort des Herausgebers. Forward of the outgiver, of the editor. Preface. Dieses Buch enthält die uns gebliebenen Aufzeichnungen jenes Mannes, welchen wir mit einem Ausdruck, den er selbst mehrmals gebrauchte, den Steppenwolf nannten. Dieses, this, Buch, book, enthält, contains, die, the, uns, to us, gebliebenen, uh, remaining, left, Aufzeichnungen, notes, jenes Mannes, of that man, welchen, whom, wir, we, mit, with, einem Ausdruck, uh, an expression, den, which, er, he, selbst, himself, mehrmals, uh, many times, often, repeatedly, gebrauchte, used, den Steppenwolf, the Steppenwolf, the wolf of the steppes, nannten, called. So, uh, this book uh, contains the notes that remain to us of that man, whom uh, we called, uh, with an expression that he himself often used to use, the wolf of the steppes. Ob sein Manuskript eines einführenden Vorwortes bedürfe, sei dahingestellt. Mir jedenfalls ist es ein Bedürfnis, den Blättern des Steppenwolfes einige beizufügen, auf denen ich versuche, meine Erinnerung an ihn aufzuzeichnen. Ob, whether, sein, his, Manuskript, Manuskript, eines, an, einführenden, uh, leading in, introductory, vorwortes, uh, preface, bedürfe, uh, might need, might require, sei, let that be, dahingestellt, uh, put over there. Mir, to me, jedenfalls, in any case, ist, is, es, it, ein, a, bedürfnis, necessity, den Blättern, uh, to, to the pages des Steppenwolfes, of the Steppenwolf, einige, uh, a few, beizufügen, to, together to put, to, to add, auf denen, uh, upon which, ich, I, versuche, attempt, meine, my, erinnerung, memory, an ihn, uh, uh, on him, of him, aufzuzeichnen, down to write, to note down. So, uh, whether or not uh, his manuscript uh, needs an introductory preface is uh, immaterial. Uh, in any case, to me, it's necessary uh, to add a few pages to the Steppenwolf's pages, uh, upon which I uh, attempt to write down my memories of him. So, uh, there you have a brief introduction to German, what it looks like, what it sounds like, how it works. I began with German because, as the largest and most important Germanic reference, it will be a good uh, frame of reference and point of comparison for the other Germanic languages.